Okay, and in this tutorial I'm going to speed through really quick how to create blend shapes and then how to bind the mesh skin onto the rig and paint these skin weights on that. Alright, so uh, really quickly what a blend shape is. A blend shape allows you to change um, different uh, facial expressions in animation. So let me turn off the joints, don't need to see those. So we can kind of see his face right here. Um, if, you, if I turn on this layer, I have a whole bunch of other blend shapes. Uh, blend shapes are basically just different uh, shapes. So this is a different eye shape changed from the original shape. This is kind of like a eyebrow thing. And then the opposite side over here, I built another one with left eye and left eyebrow. So all these faces have slight little changes. So to create a change, just simply grab the original face, uh, control D to duplicate, and then move that over here. And let's say I want to change, let's give him a frown or something. I'll go over here to, let's say, face mode. Grab one, two different faces. And I can start uh, rearranging this. I can just pull out however I want, or I can put this in soft selection, which is right here. By double clicking on the move icon, you can pull out this menu. Uh, you get the soft selection, turn that on. You can see it discolors everything by yellowish to red. If I slide down this radius, it makes it a smaller selection. Let's try something like 0.2 in this case. So it's a little bit on the lip, and I'll set this instead of volume to surface. That way it only covers the surface and not the whole area around it and I can pull out a slip a little bit and you can do a lot more um, adjustments you can grab a whole face area and pull his cheek out you can adjust the size of this to a bit larger and you can pull a larger area so you can see the soft select grabs a larger uh, section rather than just regular polygon like that so sometimes you might like to do soft select um, anyway so now we have a different facial expression so again that was just taking your original face duplicating and making a change once you have as many faces as you want, uh, let's say I'll take this one, this one, uh, this one, looks like it's referenced, unreference that, this one and this one, so now I can have, grab three, I can grab all of them I wanted to, but make sure the very last one you pick, uh, using shift to grab everything, make sure the last one is the final face you want to use, then go over to um, uh, deform, which is under modeling, so deform, blend shape, uh, you can pull up the options if you want, but we don't really need to change anything. So I'm going to press apply, and as long as the mesh was originally copied and duplicated the exact same, it won't work if you change any polygons between the, uh, them by the time you create them. Uh, so once it's been created, nothing's going to look visually different, but you're now going to have a new option. If you go over to Windows, um, Animation Editors, and Blend Shape, I'm using my 2016, 17 might have a little bit different uh, settings. But it should look something similar to that icon with something sounding similar to blend shape. Uh, so we click on this one and it pulls up a window here. These uh, options wouldn't have been here had I not done the blend shape. So now that I've done it and pressed apply, it created these three settings. So if I click off of this, you can kind of see now that I can have a lip control. I can have the eye control so we can blink. Or I can do multiple at once. Or I can do all three of them. So you built in animation controls into your model simply by creating uh, various different faces, selecting them, and then grabbing the face that you want to control last, and now you have built-in controls. So that's uh, blend shapes. So now, uh, once we have that, we want to go and um, uh, attach the mesh to the character. If I put the joints back on, you can see that if I grab our character and move the rig around, it doesn't move the character yet. So I want to grab the character mesh. Um, I'll start with a hard object, let's say the chest piece. So any object that you don't want to move, I mean, you don't want to be squashy, stretchy, you just want it to be a hard surface. Uh, you grab this just like we did in the earlier project. This one first, grab the joint that you want to parent it to. So child, parent, press P on the keyboard, and that'll parent it to it. So now if I grab this chest control and rotate around, you can see the chest piece got parented. So any object is going to be a hard surface object that won't move. I could keep going and grab a couple more. So this one, and let's say this one, and probably that one as well. So all of these will also get parented to that. So all those are childs. This is parent for the joint, P on the keyboard, and boom. So now if I move this again, you can see that his whole chest area, his whole chest armor is uh, glued to his bones. So those won't squash and stretch. They're permanently attached. If you want to create something that does squash and stretch, uh, let's say his body, we'll use the next method. For this one, you can grab multiple things at, one, at, at once if you want. So let's say I want to grab all the rest of the belt with it. So let me turn off the joints. 
Uh, let's grab all of these. I don't need the cape and I don't need the bag. So I'll just take his whole chest area for the demo purposes. Uh, I don't need um, the armor. I guess it won't deselect. Okay, I guess because it's already been selected with the other controls. Since I selected all the controls, there you go. See the controls were selected. All right, so we'll go to, uh, this one's gonna be not modeling, this one's gonna be under rigging. So we switch to the rigging controls. This will be under skin, and then you have bind skin and interactive bind skin. Bind skin will just kind of stick it all into your bones at once, um, and then interactive will give you some more controls to it. Uh, we also need to select the rig, so let me turn on the joints, and make sure you grab the root control. If you grab any parts of the bone, bones, you only attach it to the bones selected. If you grab the root, it should light up your entire joint system in green. That means you know you've grabbed all the joints. Once those are all selected, we'll go to, uh, not the blend shapes, uh, we'll go to skin. I'll use interactive bind skin. You shouldn't need to go to the options, but if you wanted to double check them, uh, those should be good enough. All right, so we'll press um, bind skin and all right, I guess there's one or more objects, so you, it looks like you have to combine them first. So let me deselect out the root joint. All right, so now we just have these. So we'll go to mesh, back to modeling, mesh, combine. So that puts all of these pieces into one object. I probably shouldn't have combined the sword, um, but oh well. Uh, let's control Z that, deselect out the sword, mesh, combine again. Okay, so now his body mesh is all one clickable piece. So any piece that you want to be squashed and stretchy, make sure you combine it as one piece. And then when you go over here to uh, hold shift, grab the root again, bind skin, now it should bind it. Now that you've interactive uh, bound skin, you get what's kind of, kind of like this control capsule thing. So I can control this around. If I grab the green, I can pull this down or up. What you're doing is saying that this particular joint, which is the root joint, will have control over this much of his body. So you can click on any of these joints. Let's say I click on the arm joint, uh, and it looks like by default it's a mirror. If it's not mirrored by default, you can just um, uh, move them, interact or differently, um, either way. So it looks like when its upper arm bends, it's going to bend his forearm, and you're gonna get this distortion. If I cancel out of that, and let's say I move him, you can see that it moves the guy's body. But if I were to move, let's say the arm you can see that it bends his arm, kind of like deforms it and breaks it in half. So we don't want that effect. And that's what the, um, the shading was too far down into his wrist. So we need to pull that up to his elbow area. So to get back to that tool, that's going to be under back to rigging uh, skin. So this one created it, but this one down here will edit it. So we're gonna go to interactive bind skin tool and not just the bind the skin. So interactive bind skin tool, you click on this and now you'll have the tool back. So when you click on, let's say, this joint, it'll light up with the tool again. So I'm gonna pull this until the colors stop at the elbow where he needs to be bending at, not bending in the middle of his forearm. I'm gonna pull this down also so it kind of keeps his arm in the arm area. Click on the next joint. Uh, that looks like it's already pretty decently in the elbow area. This looks like it's in the wrist area. I can pull it up maybe a little bit. The degrees of colors are how much influence you're gonna be getting. Red means super uh, controlled, all the way to blue, which means it's barely moving at all. So this part being blue means it's not gonna move as much. You could try and adjust some, like pulling it out wider if you wanna make this more red, pull this green down some more so it kinda of stops it there. And the more you can accurately get this uh, centered and created on it, it will give you better control. So let's move down to the leg, let's pull this up. Oops, uh, pull this up to the knee area. That's probably too high, pull it down to the waist. Grab this one, that's probably too high, pull it down to the knee area, and so on. So you just keep adjusting this interactive method. And so now when you create some motions, let's go back to the move tool, and let's grab his foot. So when I move his foot, it should look decent, but if you're getting distortions like this, you probably have some issues you're gonna have to paint out manually. You can go back to interactive skin, try and adjust that some more, but if that's not working, um, we'll have to manually do it. Uh, so if I move the character now, he should be a little more accurate. Uh, the problem with building him in the A pose is that his arm right here is going to attach to the side because it's too close to there. Uh, so you get this kind of distortion as well. 
So in order to fix this, because the moving the cap capsules don't always fix it, I'm going to move him into a couple different positions. So I'm going to move him up to here and here, so I can see that this is having issues and this is having issues. And here's where we're going to manually paint the weights. So you click on the mesh first, and then you go to Skin, Paint Skin Weights. So here's another tool that will allow you to adjust the settings. So if I click on Paint Skin Weights, it should open with a window here, and you have all these controls. So what it's saying is that each joint, if you named them uh, correctly when you built the rig, this should be much easier to figure out which joint is which. So this is the root joint. The white means it has control of that area. If I click on the back joint, you can kind of see that it lights up the back joint, and the back joint has this much control. The chest joint has control over this area. Unfortunately, the chest is also influencing the leg. We don't want the chest joint, when you rotate his chest, to have any effect on the legs. This part of his body won't mess with the skin down there, so you're painting the skin to the assigned bones. So in order to fix this problem, uh, we're going to paint black. Black means no control, white means full control. So over here you see the value. Value of one means uh, white, let's move that over. Uh, value of zero means black. So I'm going to paintbrush black on here. And by painting off the influence of the chest, the chest will no longer affect the legs. Okay. Sometimes it can be a little tricky trying to get the correct angle to get it to move. So, could take a little effort on that one. There's also another method where you can grab the vertices manually also. I'll hold off of that for now, just keep painting the other pieces. Alright, so that looks pretty decent, so I fixed out that part. And this part is kind of the opposite, where the chest is um, pulled too far up by the wrist, or the arm, so I'm going to reverse that and say that the upper chest part has more control in this area. So if I give the chest more control, it'll pull this in closer. Cool. So it looks like it's working. It's still pulling out a little bit, which means the arm probably still has too much control. So I can paint some more here, kind of decorate them a little more. Uh, let's go back to the arm. So I look down here on the list and say that the uh, left arm has you can see too much white down here, it's too much control, this arm is moving the chest area. So I'm going to go back to the black, and you can go anywhere in between with gray, but I'm going to go black because we want no control. So paint the black on here, and that pushes his arm, and well, it pushes his skin backwards. And so here you, oops, too far. So in this case you might want to go with a grayish color, and you can paint out kind of an intermediate uh, amount. You can also hold shift and paint, and that'll kind of blend the colors a little more. You probably add a little more white. And then probably go back to the chest because it looks like the chest has too much control in this area. Paint that with black because the chest shouldn't affect the arm. And so on and so forth. You just keep going through and painting out these colors. So in the end, when you go back to controlling your character, he should have an arm that moves that doesn't affect the chest and his leg should move also, oops, and not affect, um, shouldn't have as much distortion. Uh, we never did fix this part, so now that I've moved the lake out a bit more, uh, I might be able to reach it or paint it a little easier. So let's go back to the painting tool, so skin, uh, paint skin weights, oops, you gotta grab the mesh first, and then go to the tool, paint skin weights, and should be a little easier to find it now. That should be black on the chest joint, paint that. Looks like it's working easier now. Cool. Alright, and you can see here I didn't do the other side. When I painted the weights it only painted the one side, so if I go to move now and I remove his foot or leg, you can see I fixed that area so his leg looks a lot cleaner now, but the other leg, if I move this one, you can see it's still distorted. So we need to fix that. In order to fix that without having to do it all over again, I can just mirror the skin weights. So I'm going to zero this back out. If you first you transforms on the curves first, just pressing zero will reset everything. Otherwise, you'll have to manually oops, uh, move his foot back in place. But zero is a quick way to put everything back. All right, so to mirror weights, uh, let's put everything back to the original position. So zero everything. All right, and now 
click on your mesh that you want to um, adjust, go to skin, and we want to mirror skin weights, pull up your options to figure out which direction. This is set to YZ. If we look at the plane down here, we have the green, Y, and Z, and it's kind of splitting it in this direction. So if you look this way, it's the plane's built across the screen, so it's going to split right through the character and mirror from the right half to the left half, or vice versa. So I'm going to click on this one and press apply and see what happens. So now if I grab his foot, it should have mirrored the weights and his foot should now be correct. So it mirrored the weights and repainted the whites and blacks just like this side had. And that should about do it. Once you have all of the weights painted, I did it kind of quickly and didn't do all the parts, but you can kind of see that it should move him more or less. The chest armor is moving with it because we already parented that. So if I rotate his chest, you can see that um, the chest armor won't bend at all. His body is squashing and stretching and getting really deformed. I still have to adjust more painting of weights, but the chest armor is hard objects and it won't bend at all. So those are the two differences, parenting an object to the joints or just painting the weights and then mirroring the skin weights afterwards. All right, uh, once you're done that, uh, you wanna export everything just to make sure it works. So let me turn off the blend shapes. I don't need those. I could add this to the same layer, right click, add selected objects, boom. So all I need is this to go into um, the game engine. So I'm going to show and hide my joints because I don't need to export the joints. I would just want to make sure that everything turned out correctly before I go and um, do the animation. So let's select everything. Uh, looks like it's grabbing the IKs and all that. So let's turn off IK handles, try this again. Alright, so now it's grabbing all the polygons. All we want to do is take the polygons out. The like, curves won't matter. So we go to File, Export Selection and we want to do FBX. I'm going to call this uh, test export and let's put this on I guess the school sure good right there test, text export cool alright and when you're all done you should have exported correctly now we're going to go over to and if this had an animation on it we'd bake the animation into the mesh but we don't have the animation on it yet so you want to test it first, and what you should get is something that looks like this. So let me grab the file I just created. It should be under test export. Toss this guy into Unity, so test export into here. And boom, here's the test export. He should look correct. If he doesn't look correct here, he probably won't look correct here. Looks like he's microscopic. We can change those settings by going over to the model size, setting the model to let's say a scale factor of 10 and going to apply and now he should be a lot larger. But either way, you want to make sure that he turns out correctly here before you do any animation because if you have to make model changes it may affect the um, animation if the models aren't exactly the same. But it looks like everything's turning out correct with all the skin weight. Um, there's no reverse normals or other glitching issues. Um, so everything should be fine. So at this point you can go back to uh, Maya and save this file and start animating with this guy. And that should about finish this up. Also of note, um, if you noticed, if you select everything and press 1 to take off the smoothing, uh, this is what Unity is currently seeing, it's the hard surfaces. If I go back to Unity over here, you have the hard surfaces. If you want to have something soft edge, you have to smooth it in Maya first. Oops, wrong one. Uh, you have to go to Mesh, uh, this wrong one. Modeling, Mesh, Smooth, and that'll smooth it out for you. So this is what Unity will see now. Uh, vice versa, which is like this one right here, pressing 3 on the keyboard is a preview mode. That doesn't affect Unity. Unity is only going to see 1 on the keyboard, not 3. So if you want it to look like this, you have to manually go over to Mesh and smooth it before sending to Unity. So now this is what Unity will see on the export. So again, make sure everything's correct before you start animating, just so that your model is um, coherent with all the other animations, you don't have to change anything. And so this is what you should get when you're all done.